also some heavy uh, petting going on somewhere. I'd like to know where, but I don't. Welcome to the stream. Twitch now tells me I'm live. Probably was live a few seconds ago. All right, today we're going to discuss. Um, we're going to we're going to do some programming. But we're going to discuss a very interesting uh, technique in programming, and that might even help you in life. Now, I've been trying to solve this problem here. Um, oh, actually, I got a little note here. What, who, someone says I'm worried. Well, yeah. Cool. Uh, but we'll look at that later. Um, so the problem I'm trying to solve here is the waypoints problem, and I do have it uh, listed here. God, I hope I do. I'm going to be so pissed off if I don't. Um, here it is. Calculate waypoints between departure and destination. I'm going to reload it to see if anyone's answered it and pretty much ruined what I was going to do. They have not. Fantastic. So my original way of, of looking at this problem was uh, there are a number of... Um, the waypoints he's talking about are FCs, FAA facilities, uh, Federal Aviation Administration facilities. I downloaded a list of them, and what I thought I would do is I would look at the... you know, given a route between any two of these, um, I would try to find the 5 or 10 or 15 uh, waypoints that are closest to the path. Um, but it occurred to me later on that um, that it's possible that all the waypoints, the closest waypoints, are all very close to each other and very close to, like, let's say, the beginning or the end of the flight. Uh, in other words, you want waypoints that are sort of evenly spaced between departure and destination. You don't want waypoints that are like the closest to the curve that you're flying. If they, if it turns out there's like none of them near the end of the flight. So this is. Um, and this is a problem I can solve easily, but the, the technique we're using here is much more interesting, and it is change the problem until you can solve it. So I'm going to reinterpret the problem, and I will mention this, um, this um, uh, it's not a podcast, is it? it's a stream. This stream, uh, in my answer, let's go ahead and make a note to do that, um, and we are gonna, we're actually going to do a little bit more here, but um, uh, I mentioned stream and answer, which, which I should be doing all the time. Um, but the brilliant part is now I've reinterpreted it in a way that it's very easy for me to solve. Um, and, and I think that is, um, that is the, the, the key here in programming is, is to, you know, only solve problems you can solve. If, you, if there's a problem you can't solve or if it looks difficult, uh, change it. Pretend it's another problem. Okay, now that we're doing that, let's go ahead and get into here and call it VC waypoints unless I already have a way. I don't. All right, I'm pretty good with Pearl. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Um, so, th and I will go ahead and require my library because I always use it. The, my library is in GitHub, but when I require it, I require it from user local lib because that is within the um, within the path, I think, of of uh, Pearl. Actually, I have no idea why I do it now because it. Anyway, I do it. Okay. So now. Let's look at, I went ahead and downloaded the waypoints earlier. Let's go and take a look at them real quick. There, this is it, NFDC facilities, uh, and I bzipped them because they're, they're pretty big and I need to save space uh, in, um, in Git because they, they do impose a limit, I think, or they used to, they might not anymore actually. And before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and um, checkpoint what we have done before I, we continue. Okay, and uh, let's take a look at these real quickly. Uh, this is your basic um, tab separated value with 10 billion different things in it. Um, and we need to read it in. This is not a huge deal. Um, okay, uh, and we will just say, oh, actually, hang on. Um, because it is uh, because it is because it is compressed, we do need to actually say this. Uh, Git home is wherever you put my library. If you want to download my Git, put it somewhere other than I do. All you have to do is change BC lib Git home in the library. So this is intentional. So I don't say like home user blah 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 because you might not have the same paths. Okay, so my data equals. Um, I get this like I don't know if it's. Um, I don't even remember what the name is now of the thing where you uh, 
uh, you know, you think you're a fraud, um, but you're not. But I might actually be a fraud because usually I can do stuff like this really easily. Um, but today, now that I'm doing it in front of someone, I'm worried that I'm going to imposter syndrome is what I either have or don't have. So let me go ahead and see if we can run this. All it's going to do right now is load in the entire file and it's going to... Okay, yep, yep, yep. I need to do something about those. Um, and, and print it out. If it's going to take... Uh, it shouldn't take... Okay. Okay, that didn't... One to four. What the fuck? All right, hang on. Oh... Yeah, there is an ugliness here. We, if you're going to load it in as a string, you have to do it like this. You cannot put parentheses around it. I don't know why. All right, and that took a fraction of a second, so I'm very happy. Um, we're now going to basically go through it line by line. Um, and the first line is going to be the header line. And um, I might even have a function that does this. I'm going to check real quick. I don't... Like... Um, it's a function that basically takes um, something where the uh, first row is the header line and let's actually look for the word header um, array with headers to hash list um, and what this does is it takes an array with headers which we can very easily make data by splitting it on the new line or actually on the control R, you know, the control M, because it looks like these things end with uh, DOS new lines and Unix new lines. Um, send it this array, and it will return an array of hashes, and in each case, the hash will be like, you know, owner CZ will match up to the, the value of owner CZ. Um, this is not a hard function to write, it just, I got sick of doing it so often. Um, so this is, this is, um, uh, this is, um, so this is a very nice way of doing this problem, I think. Uh, what we do is we say array with headers to hash. Okay, hang on. We do need to actually create um, hash list. Uh, we're going to have, of course, data is currently a string, but we can fix that um, by saying a split on, you know, the, the backslash r is the DOS new line. Backslash n is, of course, the Unix new line. And I think I messed up there. I hope that'll be correct. Um, I think that is correct. I'm going to be a little bit naughty. Oh, did I say naughty? Seriously? What is wrong with me? I'm going to be a little bit weird and actually look to make sure that this is correct. I don't want to send it to a big function without making sure. This is my paranoia here. Um, no, I don't want to debug data anymore. I now want to debug uh, the list of data which is very similar, but it's different. Okay, it looks okay to me. I didn't actually look at it. Um, so now we can say... Um, now here's where in Perl you get to really confuse people. Because data is a... the scalar variable data and the list variable data are different, you can do things like this. Whether or not you should, I will leave that to uh, to someone else to decide. Okay, so this should be a list of hashes. So if I do this, I should really see um, see a hash for each one of these values. Okay. Okay, that's not very cool that we only got two results here. So something went wrong. Um. And this might not be the right thing to split on. So let's, okay, okay, okay. We'll actually create a list called data that is the split of um, this list on the new line. And then we'll test it to make sure it's working. Um, and so what I want to see is dollar sign number data, which is going to be the uh, length of the, of the array minus one. It's the highest index in the array. Um, so let's see if that works. Okay, that looks fine. Um, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
When I send stuff to the, as an array, I need to do something magical with it. Yep, I need to put a backslash in front of it. That's what that's what the issue is. Um, in theory, I could compute this list and then send a pointer to it. Um, by oh man, by doing something like this. God damn it. If this works, I'll be very sad, because this is very, very ugly. In fact, I might undo it. I just want to see if we can create a list, treat it as a list, and then take its reference and send it. Good, it didn't work. OK. So we have this. This is now your list of data. And now we can say my um, hashes. And all we need to do is give it data, but as a reference, not as a as a list of uh, list of because a list would be a list of arguments. So now let's see if it actually behaves the way we want. Right, because I actually meant to say for i in hashes. Okay. Okay, not cool. Array with headers to list. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does it return a point or two? Okay. Yes, it does. So, this is hashes. There should be a pointer to an array of hashes. Let's, let's see that that's what it is. Yes, it's an array. So, And I'm going to be you know, ugly again. We know this returns a pointer to an array, so we can do this. And it is now the array itself, I think. So here we should see each i should be a hash, and there should be like a whole bunch of them. Okay. Not an array reference, your mama. Oh, fuck, it returns two different things, doesn't it? Fine. Um, so these are both, re it returns two references, I just realized. So um, I can't quite do that magic on it. And now these things better be frickin' what I think they are. They better be array and hash references, and I need array reference, RRF. Okay. Okay, good. The secondary hash um, is something that we, we return. Oh, sorry, this right here. Um, that it's optionally returned if we want it to be returned. In this case, we're not using it, but we still have to realize the fact that it is returned, so we need to have it to ignore it. So finally, um, the array that is dollar sign array ref. Finally, I don't think this is going to work now. I'm now that it's now that I've gotten to the point where it should work, uh, I get the feeling it won't work. But now it'll work just to spite me. Yep, there it is, a bunch of hashes. Okay, so what are we doing with all this information? Um, we don't need to store all of the information. In fact, um, let's see. In fact, most of this information we are not going to need. Uh, oh, because we're only computing, we're only computing waypoints. We don't care for like 90. I meant to say busy cat. No, I meant to say busy less. Jesus. Okay. Site number, location, effective ID, region, county. I got. To, I hope that the latitude, uh, the latitude and longitude are here. Uh, site number, location ID. Um, well, you know what? Let's just do this. Uh, for the very first one, and uh, for J, okay. I is a um, is a reference to a hash. So this is how we would get its uh, its key, a list of its keys. And then uh, I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. Let's see. I think this is correct. I might need to put a little sign here indicating that um, 
that the keys are a list. Okay, that's not correct. Um, um, actually, that should be fine. Oh, no, because I need to say that it's a key. I think that's the problem. Nope. Um, all right. This is the correct way to do it, is to not try to skip too many variables. So for j, keys hash. And this better work, or otherwise I am going to, well, let's see if it works first. Okay, that's not what we want. Oh, fooiness. I think array with headers to hash list requires, um, requires the separating character to be a comma or something. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I am so sorry. No, no, we need to give it an array of arrays. So let's, let's be a little bit more careful. There. Okay. So the data is that we get it into rows. Um, Okay. Uh, sometimes being too clever kills me, and um, the fact that I try to keep talking on the stream helps with that because it reminds me that I'm wasting time that I could be coding instead of trying to find something that's more clever, but will take uh, longer to uh, to think about and to think of than than just the obvious answer. Okay. So we have my data equals this, and. Um, so now each index of data is a line, but we actually want to go one step further. We want to push an array of arrays. So, um, man, and this is the wrong way of doing it. For each element in, um, in data, I am going to say, Put yourself on the tab. That gives you a list. Um, and set yourself equal to the reference to that list. Um, oh, and I guess I need to do, you do it on data. Okay. Uh, and we'll just type. Now, I don't know if it actually affects data itself or it uh, creates a new, uh, new array uh, that does this. But let's see what the hell this does. Whew. Okay. Um, wow. So in theory, this should work. I, I, we have more than five rows and we have more than five. Um, mm. I also don't like the fact that it's continuously saying the same array. Uh, well, let's see what this does. Oh, data five is an array. So, debug the list that is data five. Okay, so apparently whatever's going on here, it's not doing this correctly. Um, okay. And the, we're gonna do it correctly now. We're gonna create a new list called end data. Oh man, hang on. That's gonna kill me here trying to be clever. Um, okay, screw that. All right, so we're gonna create a new list called end data, and we're gonna populate it correctly. Okay, four dollar sign i in data. My list equals split. It is the tab character, right? God, I hope it is. Um, we'll just do this here. And we'll just make sure this is working fine. All right, let's make sure we're going too fast here. Okay, good. This is good. This is L is a bunch of good stuff like this. And then we'll push to end data a reference to L. 
And the cool thing is this reference will change each time because I have a my inside of a loop. And the other cool thing is I could be wrong about that. Let's see what this does. Yep, bunch of arrays here. And now I'll do it like 17 or something so we're not getting end data 17, 4. Tell me what that is. Oh, you know, it might actually be null though. AAL, beautiful. So now we have a two-dimensional array go in here with end data. Kind of not worth the effort at this point, huh? Um, and you know, I think this would have been better if we actually had re read it from a file one line at a time and then, um, then push these arrays into this uh, end data, but whatever. Okay. All right, so finally, if this works, I should now be an, uh, I should now be a hash ref. Yep. More importantly, I should now be able to look at its keys. Um, when I treat it as a hash. And we won't get the same key over and over again because we don't have more than one key. Let's try that. There we go, beautiful. Okay, and the whole point of this little thing here was um, I want to see what sorts of values are in uh, the, uh, the header. I want to see what sorts of values are uh, uh, that, you know, the ones we're likely to need. And I think this is the correct syntax to say if, a is a refer if i is a reference to a hash, this will get its uh, jth key, the value of its jth key, I think. Let's see what that does. Um, okay. Wow, there's a ton of crap here. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more. I'm going to say... And I'm going to put a new line there because I think the first few fields are going to be more important, so I would like to see where the record begin and end. Well, I'll just go down a little bit here so we don't... Uh oh, wow, okay. Oh, these aren't even in order. God damn it. Hang on. Operations date. Jesus Christ. Oh, there's a manager guy. Third-party survey. Okay. City might be useful, but I think there's something more... Um, ARP latitude? That sounds like it's useful. That that sounds like something we actually need. Power plant repair, manager phone, state name, Jesus effing Christ. Military landing rights. Um, elevation we're not going to look at right now. We could. ARP longitude. I wonder why ARP, though, that's what kind of bugs me. Um, if I were being, uh, making a joke, I'd say, well, that's the American Association of Retired Persons, but that's AARP. Okay. So, I guess the question is, what the frick is it? Where are we looking for an ID? Let's see, I don't even know if that's... Location ID, uh, not an facility ID. That actually looks pretty good. I see an identifier. That's actually, I, I like that. And that's sometimes called the METAR identifier, and I do know what those are. Uh, all the reports have this four-digit code that identifies them. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Okay. Wow. Let me take a quick look at the file by itself to see which ones are sort of at the beginning. Site number. That could be really useful. 
And let me go ahead and bring up a different screen to run the program in so we can, um, we hash? Uh, so we can sort of look to see how many of these things are uh, actually useful to us. So the site number sounds like it's like right away very interesting. Wow, that, those are some ugly looking site numbers. So I guess we should use that because it's the first row, it's the first column in the file, which suggests someone somewhere thinks it's important. So let's go ahead and um, uh, do that. Type location ID, effective date, region, district office, state, dot, 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 facility name. That looks like it's something that could be useful. Okay. Did we already get Nottam facility ID? No, we didn't. We should probably do that too. Facility name, it looks like something you wouldn't have difficulty using because um, it's multiple letters. It's, it has spaces, it's multiple words. We're going to go ahead and put it in here, but we might not end up using it. Well, we'll record it, but we're not going to necessarily use it. Um, let's see what else we have here. Ownership, use, owner at manager address manager, ARP elevation. ARP method, ARP elevation method, magnetic variation, distance from, I guess, cannab cannabis oil. I don't know. Um, wowzers. That's a lot of shit there. Um, okay, we can get more stuff if we need to. For right now, I think we're, we're going to be good with this. So what we want to do is we want to put this uh, data that we have into a new hash. Uh, that I'll call FAA info because that's what it is and then what we want to say here is um, okay so the first thing we need to do is we need to identify the station by something and we are going to do that by its ICAO identifier um, let me check something real quick though I want to make sure everyone has one because if they don't Ooh, no, 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 that's no good. If you don't have one, I need to use something that everybody has one of. Um, um, so what what are some of the ones we have? We have a facility, NOTAM facility ID. So everybody better have one of those. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And let's let's see what we're getting here. Oh shit! Not everyone has one of those. And some people they repeat sometimes. This isn't going well at all. All right, what else can we get here? All right, all right. What else do we decide could be a possible uh, site number? Is probably unique and well defined everywhere. Man, that's ugly though. Well, all right. Ugly is as ugly does. So we if we need it. We need it. Okay. So it looks like site number is actually going to be uh, something that they're all going to have. Now, suppose I wanted to confirm this without you know sort of scanning all of them. What would I do? Well, I could do a sort and then a unique minus C and then a sort minus NR. This will tell you how many times each facility ID appears, and hopefully that's just one for everybody good and it also be, even though I didn't specify it this sort is now in reverse order of of uh, site n um, site number um, so the, what we're going to do here at the bottom we're going to see is there any case where it's empty and it is not so beautiful and we will write this down confirmed site number exists uniquely for each row so this means when we, when we create the hash, um, the key here will be, uh, let's see, dollar sign A. And by the way, I'm a terrible person for not putting quotes around what I'm about to do. Uh, sorry, what would we decide was the um, site number. Site number is the thing we decided. Um, this might be the ugliest thing you'll ever see if it works. Hello, we got a person coming in the, in the chat, thank God. 
You asked strange questions on Quora. Um, I don't remember doing that. I have no recollection of that. But um, but tell remind me. This is Fierce Crocodile in the chat asked saying you asked strange questions on Quora. Remind me of the questions I asked on Quora. I, I, I assume you mean my um, the one account that's still alive, stalking you. Please, please. I am desperate. Um, but tell me what 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 were the strange questions were. I mean, I don't know what you mean by strange. I mean, like perverted strange or mathematically strange or uh, hacking strange. Um, I, I honestly don't remember. I don't I don't visit Quora that often. I created a new account with Quora uh, because I might want to start going there more often. Uh, but that was just I just I just created the account and got out real quick. I will continue to do this while you tell me. Okay, here we go. No, not important. What's none of this is important. Nothing is important. Life is not important. Go ahead and tell me. I mean, I mean, that's fine. Really, the goal of this stream is just for me to have fun, and if we can annoy people along the way, that's fantastic. So let's continue. Let me finish what I was saying about this. Well, you, while you're typing that up, I'll, I'll mention this. Okay, let's see. Why Pearl? I never learned Pearl. It's actually P E R L, uh, and uh, I have to correct that. Um, this is Perl. It's the first language I, well, kind of the first language I learned. Um, it's not great by itself. Uh, yes, I wonder what's th with the distance to the point. Um, that was a problem we were trying to solve earlier. Uh, so if you're flying from, let's say, New York to Paris, what's the closest you come to, uh, yeah, the stream from before. Uh, what's the closest you come to, let's say, uh, Miami, Florida? or whatever. Still, there was no answer. Correct. Um, several people in Stack have given um, methodologies to do this. They say, here's how you would do it. You wanted to the shot. <laughs> oh, you remember this. Yes, I did. Uh, in fact, I think I still have up the diagram here uh, where I was going to put these three points on the sphere, then use the plane that cuts through them, and then take like the shortest um, you know, and then find in the plane where the shortest uh, point was, and then reproject it onto the sphere. Th there's two problems with that. Um, one is it's exactly identical to what I was doing before when I was drawing the line through the sphere, and two, I don't think it's going to be that easy. I think that's I'm not even convinced that the shortest distance in the plane, when you project it back to the sphere, will still be the shortest distance. Um, so there too. Yes, that is what I wanted to do, and I realized later after the stream, uh, my algebra is not that good. Yeah, this is. I think I think one problem here was, um, I wasn't sure what kind of answer I was looking for. In some sense, I'd like to get a closed form answer, so you could just say plug this formula in, you're done. On the other hand, I don't think that's possible, and I don't think that's easy if it is possible. So I'd have to provide an algorithm. Um, and if I do that, I'd really like to be able to just provide it in multiple languages. I don't want to sort of say, here's the Perl version. You have to figure out how to report it to your language. Um, never did such stuff. So I was curious. You said that a solution exists. Yeah, if you look on the, if you look on the Stack Exchange, um, um, see right here, this is an answer. And, and this, is, this, is, this is an answer. Uh, what I gave with the full matrix earlier uh, was will give you an answer. Um, the the problem is, you sort of have two choices here, and actually this is another answer here. I think this is a third answer here, uh, but they're not complete answers. They kind of okay. Now this is the guy who wants to use the plane. Um, uh, I might have to look at this one and healthy again. I'm sorry to hear that you have a cold. I don't want to use your brain. Um, I try not to use my brain even when I am healthy, but do get better. Um, I can't really advocate watching my stream when you're sick or when you're healthy, but but uh, you probably should get some rest. Um, unless my stream is putting you to sleep, which it might, uh, this is probably, you know, I don't mind, I like you being here, but I, I would suggest for your own health, maybe this is not the best place to be. All right, later, thank you for showing up and reminding everyone of my miserable failure earlier. I'm just kidding, thank you, and goodbye for now. Okay, so... Well, okay, if you can't sleep, well, you can still rest without sleeping. Um, you know, you could just lie in bed. If you really have a cold, 
uh, and you can't even maybe going to the strip club, stip club, not the strip club, the stip club would heal me. Uh, yes, I think if you can get strippers uh, sick um, with a cold, that would be just fantastic for the other patrons. They would just love that. Um, although it's quite possible that there are like strippers in the wings who are waiting for their big uh, big break, and then you know if you go and infect all the 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 mm, class A strippers, the class B strippers will show up. Maybe they'll get their chance. It would be like um, infecting some of the biggest Twitch streamers, and the rest of us get a chance. Doesn't mean we're going to win because there's a lot of us, but you know we at least get our chance to be seen. Um, yeah, good plan. That is yes, exactly. Infecting other Twitch streamers. Um, well, if you know some, I mean, um, I think I met you in another. Uh, I know I met you on another uh, Twitch streamers uh, uh, channel where I think you're a mod. Which to me means you know the Twitch streamer personally, but I think the one I'm thinking of is actually a really nice person, so I'm not going to go suggest you infect them. Okay. So here we have. Uh, I don't know if you missed the early part of the stream. If you're lucky, you did. Um, what we've done is we've changed the problem from a hard problem that's hard to solve to a much easier problem that's easy to solve by interpreting it the way I wanted to interpret it. Um, so that's that's pretty pretty darn clever, I would say. The reason what I'm doing here is ugly is because if you noticed here, the key is not site number. The key is quotation mark, site number, quotation mark. There's lots of ways to deal with that. I'm dealing with it by giving it, putting it inside of single quotes and then giving it double quotes. Um, so that, if it works, this is really kind of bizarre because it's not really clear what we're doing here. Uh, if it doesn't work, it's not clever. Um, so let's see what this does. And beautiful, it worked. So it gives us all the keys. These are unique. We can use these. And then over here, we're not going to, uh, we don't need all of the uh, values because we've decided they're not all important. The ones we've decided are important are these. And we don't need site number because site number is the key already. So we can get rid of that. Uh, there are going to be some issues here. Um, um, but very easily, we can just put quotes around these. And if we need more, we can add them. It's not a big deal. And what we're going to say here is we're going to steal the part of the array that we need and say FFA dollar sign I dollar sign J. Breathe equals dollar sign i this. So if I've done this correctly, there's there's some issues here. If I've done this correctly, we now have an index of, um, oh wow, that's not quite right. So hang on. That's i. This is, oh, we're not in a function, are we? Okay, never mind. Unknowns parentheses 757 1. No idea what that means. So now if we've done this correctly, and there's, we've made some mistakes, FAA should now be in a hash where each uh, facility uh, site number corresponds to, uh, you know, gives it, it knows its latitude, longitude, all this stuff. So let's, um, so let's debug its keys to make sure that's what's actually happening. And I kind of wish I had been consistent. FAA info is what we're going to do here. So this should list just all of the uh, all of the site numbers. If I've done this correctly and I got rid of the other debug statement, didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, that's not what I expected. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be key. Yeah, we're assigning to the key value. Uh, we're, we're using that as our key, so that's what this does. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, now there is something we want to do here, which we could do later or at this point. Um, the latitude and longitude are coming in in a format, and here I'm going to not even bother to quote them just to annoy people. That we cannot use directly. We can fix it, but we we do need to fix it. Is the point. 
Uh, and while we're fixing it, we might as well give it a better name. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, right, sorry. Okay. All right, so you can see the latitudes here are, nope, still wrong. Okay. That should be correct. Unless we have ones that don't have a latitude, but that would be just really bad. All right, that's not cool. Um, okay. Um, First of all, let's make sure that the this is a natural hash, which it should be. Um, I mean, this is pretty damn simple. The only problem I'm seeing here is maybe this is not correct. Um, and, but anyway, let's see what's going on there. Okay, good. It is a hash. Hmm. And now this should spit it out in key value format. Or no. Okay, this is, yeah. I see it good, these have these values. So is the problem that I'm not assigning these values correctly? Uh, dollar sign I. I this is what I did before, we, this should work. Unless I mean, now let's see what I do mean, okay. So this is what I'm doing, and uh, apparently this is not working. Um, let's figure out why. Yeah, okay. So dollar sign is this, this, this is not cool. Dollar sign I is a hash. I mean, I could do the hash that is dollar sign I, dollar sign J. And I probably should have done that up here. The hash that is dollar sign i dollar sign j, but that should be the same thing. But let's see if this 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 works. The correct the, the oh man. Didn't even like that syntactically. Actually, let's see if it. There can't be a syntax error now because it's inside of quotes. Um, yeah, I apparently can't do that. So. Hmm. Why that not work? Um. Oh, for exactly the same reason I had to quote site number. Um, unfortunately, the way I've done this... Well, this is okay, actually. Um, okay, hang on. This is where it gets so ugly. So we want to assign to these things, but the, the problem here is J is quoted. So we have to do it like this. And this is still a, um, that part of it was correct. Dollar sign A quoted J. Now let's see what we get. Um, and by the way, if you think, hey, it looks like you're just programming by randomly changing things until they work. You are correct. That is how I'm programming. Okay. So the hash has a... Uh, okay, Jesus effing Christ. Um, yeah. I may... All right, well, I'm going to waste some time here. I want to see what dollar sign dollar sign J is. And I also want to see what it is if I quote it. And my sense is, oh, fudge. Uh, this won't work because I think the single quotes 
prevent dollar sign j from being interpolated. So if, if I'm correct, this is going to be ugly. Well, it's not ugly, it's just not equal to anything. Um, okay. This is, so this is really the kind of thing that if you were doing production code, this is so confusing, you really don't want to use it. It's going to work, I think, but you don't want to use it. Yep, there it is. Um, the reason we have to do this is because single quotes wouldn't work because they would stop interpolation of dollar sign J. When you use double quotes inside double quotes, you can do that, but you have to escape the inner pair of double quotes. Um, and honestly, it would have been easier just in the uh, first row, which we do have, uh, to just uh, remove all the quotation marks. And I am seriously tempted to do that. Um, but now I'm kind of curious to see what this is doing. Yep, these all look good. And uh, we've effectively removed the... Um, we've effectively removed the uh, the quotation marks by doing this. So what we should see here is a bunch of ARP latitudes. And there it is. I don't know why it says key, but okay. So now the problem is, of course, these latitudes are nowhere near the format. We want them not even as degrees. So what we need to do here is, um, and we'll need to do this with the longitude as well. I think everything else can stay the way it is, though. Okay. And let's see. So what we're going to say here is uh, we shouldn't actually do it. We, it's, we're going to say it's going to look like this. It's going to look like a bunch of numbers. Oh, actually, hang on. Um, I could do a split by the minus, but that's still going to be ugly because we need to handle the N or S at the end. A um, bunch of numbers, a dash, a bunch more numbers, dash, a bunch more numbers, and these numbers can also include dots. But the others can't, but this, these ones can. And then finally, oh, no, no, we want to keep that uh, converted. Okay. And the very last thing we expect to see for a latitude is either S or N. We need to capture which one it is end of stream, uh, end of string rather. So it's going to be start a string, uh, these three things, S or N, end of string. And then if this doesn't happen, we want to say, um, right now we're going to just say die, uh, bad lat, uh, FAE. Uh, later we're going to just say we can't parse this, but right now I want to make sure that this is correct, so I want to be more aggressive in terms of finding errors. Okay. Now, well, okay, let's do this. Now I'm not even going to pipe it to less to see if it dies. Very nice. It didn't die because it got all the way down to here. So now what the hell are we going to do with these? Okay, well, these are, now we're going to say my D degrees, minutes, seconds, and um, NS meaning from north-south. And we're going to assign these to the things that match there. And... Uh, let's see. And we're going to define our own little uh, thing just called lat, because that's really what we want. So it's going to be uh, the degrees plus the minutes over 60 plus the seconds over 3600. And now a little bit of a cheat. Um, if this is a north latitude, we're, we're fine. We have the correct value now. If it's a south latitude, we need to make it negative. So we'll say here, if dollar sign and S equal, you know, S, uh, F A A info, god damn, that's a long name, key Latin, times equals minus one. We'll multiply it by negative one. Groovy. Um, and we'll call this all parse latitude. So of course the other thing we need to parse is The other thing we need to parse, of course, is the longitude. We'll get to that here. And we'll call it parse longitude. 
Now I get the feeling it's going to be almost the same, except of course it's going to end with east or west, not north or south. Um, I'm also not happy with the word ARP to see if maybe that means like not the real la latitude and longitude, but I'm going to have to kind of go with it. Um, okay. And then it's going to be east or west. And then Wung is going to be this, unless this says west, then it's going to be this. And we're going to check them by saying FAA info, key, lat, and ung. And these should look like normal latitudes and longitudes. And I realize we still haven't actually built up to where we're going with this, but uh, we will. Okay, I wish I'd put that to less, and it does look like they were, let's... Yeah, this looks okay. I, I'm, I hope I'm using the... Um, okay, I want to make sure that the S is coming out as a decimal, because um, there are decimals here, and we, do, we can't ignore them. I don't think we are, because we are uh, making it clear that this format has to be followed exactly, but I like to double check. Um, oh, sorry, good plan. No, actually, what's going on with the data? Are you being the data we're looking at now? or some other data. See, right now I'm trying to parse the... Um, see, the way they provide the latitude and longitude is like... Oh my god, what the hell is that? That's a Mercator one. Like this. I suspect nuclear missiles just judging from your... What core questions? Just mention them again. This data. Well, this is how they give latitude. They also give it as a Mercator latitude, which I maybe could have used. Um, but obviously, we, we want it as a decimal. We have to convert this into a decimal. And if it's the south latitude, we, it has to be negative decimal um, for what we're going to be doing next, which I apparently have not told anyone. Um, OK. Now, let's see. Um, Now, what I want to do is, if this thing has an ICAO identifier, um, or a not a, a facility ID, let's see. I kind of want to be able to map other stuff back to site number. So people kind of, um, but we'll do that later. We'll put that on our to-do list. Allow reference by IKO identifier, etc. Um... Okay. So now the question, of course, is we did all this, what's the, what's the point? And here's where it gets not really that interesting. Um, okay, so now we're going to say we're going to... Um, what I want to do here is... CTF facilities. I want to, the, the, the only thing that's unique about these are, is the site number. So I want to get a bunch of site numbers uh, just as a, um, for testing purposes, so we can say go between this site number and between this site number. Uh, so we can do that by doing, we're going to use, we're going to use Perl, we're going to split fields, we're going to split them on the tab, and we're going to print the zeroth field. And if I've done that correctly, oh, we need to BZ cat. We're going to take that, and if this is correct, this, there we go. Okay. And I'm going to tee these to temp uh, site numbers.txt. We're not going to use them permanently. We just need this sort of for our testing purposes. And to get two random ones, we're going to say sort minus r temp site numbers.txt head minus two. All right. So our first experiment is going to be between these two. Obviously, we're going to let the user put them in himself. This is just for testing. Uh, we'll say this is this and this is this. Okay. So now we need to find the um, the uh, latitudes and longitudes of these things. Um, and that's going to be FA info dollar sign P1 lat dollar sign all that's good stuff. 
Um, yeah, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. FA info. What questions have I asked uh, on Quora and, and as whom? Which, which identity are we talking about here? And here we want lat. Info P2 lat and oh I guess we should put longitude latitude to be consistent. Longitude is more like an X value, so we're gonna put it first. And Okay. You're not gonna tell me which ones, huh? You bastard. Oh, and I guess we need to remove our other debugging statements if we're going to make this work. Um, yep. Now I'm going to get paranoid, but I bet by now I've actually gotten rid of all the debugging statements. Yep. So let's see what this does. Okay, gorgeous. So this gives us the latitude and longitude of these two points. So the question is, what, what the hell are we doing here? Why are we getting all this data? Well, now I can use the function I wrote earlier, which is not helpful to anyone because I wrote it earlier. Um, I don't know if it's called waypoints, but... Um, oh, wow. Hang on. I do parameterize that great circle. Okay, so GC stats will give me... Um, return the point R percentage of the way between the first and second um, point. So this is actually giving you within like, um, and it's not efficient to compute multiple R, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, so what we could do here, and unfortunately this is in that law and order, but uh, we could say, and what does it return? It returns, I think, a reference to a list. I, I never, I tr avoid a, a returning, oh, it does actually return. Um, really? I hope the, he the hell this works. I'm pretty sure it worked at one point. Um, what is all that? Oh. Um, okay. Well, hell, I'm just going to debug the, the result. Um, this may be quite a bit uglier than I thought it was. Because this was like my go-to function that's going to make this all work out really well. Except apparently it's not. Um, so we give one lat, we give the same longitude for that point. Um, then we give latitude for the second point. And longitude for the second point. Okay. And I guess we need to give it an R. We'll give it three. So give me three, three debug points. So give me three points on the uh, on the on the path between these points, which happen to be really kind of close to each other. But you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. So it gave us. I'm not having fun. RLAT. Oh! No, 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 no. My bad. Um, R is the distance along the way that we want to go. So point 0.1. Okay, and now, now it only gives us one value, really gives us one value back. The first two values are the ones we want. Okay, now, now I get it. Um... So this, so 
Now, is this in degrees or in... Okay, this is in degrees, and I should probably mention that here. Uh, because we do do the conversion here. Yep. Now, unless there's an option to turn that off. Yep. Um, um, return value is also in degrees. That's fine. The only sort of bad thing here is we have a 270 degree value return, which is which is which is correct. But I mean, um, uh, let's see, that is correct. But it's um, kind of weird because it's uh, we really want 270 minus three. We will usually keep our longitudes between minus 180 and plus 180. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and push this to get since it's kind of not dead yet. Okay. Um, and now we're going to, um, so now we're going to say, you know, and let's say n equals 10, the number of points is 10. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find the, the 10 for right now, waypoints that are equally spaced distance between the two, you know, the, the departure and the arrival point. After we do that, we're going to find the closest tower to each of those points. Um, so now we, we that hopefully explains why we're doing all this crap. So we will say for um, dollar sign i is uh, blah, 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 blah. let's see. Uh, dollar sign i equals zero. Dollar sign i less than or equal to one. Dollar sign i plus equals one over dollar sign n. I get the feeling there's something wrong with this, so I want to quickly debug it. I think I'm off by a, this is a, a, one of those um, fence post things where I'm either off by one or I am not off by one. Let's see what this does. Right, this gives me 11 values actually, uh, with the starting and the ending point as well. I'm actually okay with that. Um, the only thing I have to do now is if I say 10, I need to make this n minus 1. So this will give me, always give me the beginning and end points, which are good. Oh, actually, hang on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, this actually gives me 9 um, waypoints, because the start and end point aren't waypoints. So my bad, n plus 1, to get actually get 10 waypoints. Um, no. Not good. Um, why aren't we getting this end point? Uh, yeah, hang on. So the increment is this. Are we getting the floating point error issue here? See, that number should be 1. And yet you're not printing out 1. Piece of crap. And I know it, I know the reason. I'm just going to do it again because I like doing it again. Yeah, the reason, of course, is because uh, we're doing a floating point comparison. Um, So what we're saying is it can be as high as to the half to the next one. Uh, th this should fix the problem. Yep. Okay. This basically says we can go one half step further in I just to get rid of the floating point issue. Um, that is so freaking ugly. All right. So now we're going to find the points. Actually, let me check something real quick. I've been going for over an hour, but you know what? I'm going to go for a little bit longer. Um, so I is the value of R here, of course. So we say um, my lat lung equals uh, this thing here. Um, God damn, that's ugly. But instead of point 0.1, we're going to go distance I. Um, 
And here we'll say at this point our latitude, longitude, and latitude are this. So as we're flying between point one and point two, these are our waypoints. These are ten waypoints that are exactly. Um, and I'm going to leave it like this because we're not going to use it like that. But so as you can see, um, you go from here to here, and you can see the waypoints, uh, the ten waypoints in the middle. So um, now I'm going to bet you my GC dist function does use radians just to confuse me, um, or does it? Hang on. No, it doesn't. It uses degrees. I'd say awesome, but I mean, why? And it's in the results is in miles, which is, I guess, okay. Um, um, given coordinates must be in degrees. Okay. Um, so what's the plan here? What are we going to do with this latitude and longitude we've determined? This is where it gets really ugly. We're going to measure the latitude and longitude to each single point in the, um, in the database. Every, of all the points we've done, we're going to go through every single one of them and measure the data and find the one that has the least. I mean, that's okay. Uh, GFA info. And this is a terrible loop, but it's going to be like one of the really bad things is. Um, okay, hang on. So we're going to latitude and longitude. We want to know. Uh, for the ten waypoints, we're going to go through each other way, you know, each waypoint in the database, and this is where it's going to get really ugly. Um. We're going to say my distance equals GC dist between um, lat long, and let me quickly, um, latitude, longitude, that order, okay. Uh, and then it'll be um, FA info dollar sign J lat dollar sign FA info dollar sign J long. Um, and so now we're going to say the distance between um, this. We're going to measure the distance at every point to every point. This will be fun and see what that is. 728, okay. So what we're looking for here, of course, is the, is the lowest value. Um, so let's, this is really effing ugly. But anyway. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll say, um, my min, min uh, stat equals plus infinity and no station yet. Okay. So now, if the distance is less than the min, um, we do two things. We set the min equal to the distance, and we set uh, min stat equal to the station name. And then we are going to say over here, there's something wrong with this, um, something wrong with this formatting here. Either that or I'm just doing something really terrible. This. Oh, no. Okay, I, hang on. Yeah. So if it is, otherwise we continue with the J loop. Then, back into the I loop, uh, we say min stat dist. So this is also the station that's closest to the, um, oh, I probably need to put an I, that's closest to the point that's at a given distance along the great circle route. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. And, um, yeah, it's just occurred to me that this is actually not going to be super helpful unless uh, the guy has Perl. It would have been cooler to do it um, in JavaScript. Much cooler to do it in JavaScript. Let's go back over here. So on that line from earlier, um, huh? Didn't quite catch that. All right, let me know what you mean by I saw on that line from earlier. Um, so this is good because I think we've now actually solved the problem and then decided that this is completely the wrong language to solve it in. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, um, yeah, GCD disk should not be debugging everything it gets. So this might be even more so than anything else. What the hell? Um, why, what? What the hell is I getting GC disk dot? I just undebugified that. Mm, I'm suspicious now. Uh, BBC Geodesic? Oh, wow. Did I already have something that almost did this? Oh, here's what's wrong. On this machine, I'm going to bet you anything I don't have uh, BCLib linked to... Um, to the to the version in GitHub. I do on my main machine. So let's go ahead and fix that. Uh. All right. Now let's see if that works. And I shouldn't need a lesser because there should be very few uh, return values. Okay. So these are the stations that are within like five ten miles of of where we're going. Okay, um, I think I have probably, like I said, this is not going to be useful um, to the guy uh, because unless he knows Pearl, let's go back to here, the airport closest to the line between the start and end of the flight. Um, not exactly, because uh, that would just be one airport. We want to say at each step of the flight, like one t when you're one-tenth into the flight, what's the closest... Um, FAA facility, which by the way could be a tower, doesn't have to be an airport. Uh, the FAA facilities are like air towers. Uh, they're more than just airports. Uh, then when you're two-tenths of the way along your journey, what's the closest one? Three-tenths of the way along the journey, and so on and so forth. At each step of the way, we look to see, um, we look to see what the closest one is. And which I guess you could use these to sort of dot your path. I mean, you get within like six, ten miles of a lot of, you know, nine, twelve miles here, um, that sort of thing. Um, so we're finding the ones that are closest um, as you sort of go down the line. Uh, but, um, yeah, but it occurs to me I'm not getting a formula out of this, so that's not going to help the guy. I mean, we could maybe get a formula out of this. Um, uh, so basically, I could say, well, if you want to download this and run Perl, this is this is your answer. You can do this, um, but that's bad for many reasons um, uh, because I really should have done this on a JavaScript. I mean, that would be the uh, sort of correct way to have done this is um, is using JavaScript uh, because then I could just say, here's the page to do it on, or just download this file and you know run it in your browser. You're good to go. And if you like the code, you can look at the code. The code's all right there for you. Okay, so this is very disappointing, and it's so disappointing uh, that I'm going to um, stop streaming now for other reasons as well. Uh, thank you, everyone who was... Let's see who was actually in here. Wow, again, a few people. I don't know if they're real or not, but I mean, I know Fierce Crocodile is real. 
All of this is for a stack flow answer. Um, yes. I don't think I've ever said this, but I generally try to come up with the worst or most difficult possible way to answer a stack question because I think I learn the most doing that. I mean, there might even be a website right now that will give you this data, so that's all. that would be the answer. Um, there's probably pro libraries that do what I'm doing, and to be honest, when we go into JavaScript, there will probably be JavaScript libraries that will give you this information that d doesn't require me making the calculations, and I might cheat and actually use those libraries. Um, I do not need some Kung Pao chicken, but you're very close. I need some general so chicken. Um, or whatever kind of chicken shows up at the door. And I haven't ordered anything, so that would be kind of weird. But thank you very much uh, for watching F Fierce Crocodile, everybody else. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to stream again today, so no promises. Uh, all right, thank you for watching, and goodbye. If I can get to the stop stream button.